All right. Um, the next presentation uh, is RC7. Um, uh, technical point of contact in this area. Um, and this, um, this is a, in the reactor safety technology area. Um, Mike Cordini uh, was the technology lead for this area, but that's changing as of today. And uh, Mitch Farmer is taking over this area. So we actually have both um, folks here. Uh, I think uh, Professor Cordini is going to give the um, discussion, but uh, Mitch Farmer after this will be uh, handling this area and doing the technical reviews. So I'll skip to the overview of the reactor safety technology area. Um, this pathway provides the scientific and technical insight, data analysis, and methods that can be support industry efforts to enhance nuclear safety uh, and beyond design-based events. And this, uh, again, is really a, a post-Fukushima event um, area. Uh, so these activities involve uh, coordinated effort uh, internationally to assist uh, the analysis of the accident progression and response in the following areas. Uh, one is the forensics and examination plan. So this is looking at the as the site is uh, decommissioned and taken apart, um, looking at what exactly went on, uh, what the condition is to determine how the accident progressed. Um, Another area is severe accident analysis and using uh, modeling codes to understand uh, insights of the accident progression and, and aid in the development of perhaps uh, you know, updating and enhancing the severe accident management guidance uh, based on what we uh, uncover from the Fukushima accident. And then finally, uh, looking at uh, accident tolerant components, uh, you know, looking at uh, are there any needs to update and prevent core degradation to mitigate the effects of a design-based event. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Professor Cordini. Okay, thank you. So for the people out there listening, a couple of things. First of all, as Bruce said, for instrumentation and control, there is a pathway program description on the web that you can look at that goes into greater detail as to all the various activities. Also, there's an overall program guide for the whole program. Um, since we have limited time before we have to switch to the next subject, I'll be brief. You have the work scope for RC7 listed to you. It identifies a couple of things, and I'll just simply highlight those things. So can you go to the next slide, please? So we had done a gap analysis in 2015 that identified a number of important knowledge gaps, probably a baker's dozen, about 13 of them. Of those, a number of them are already being addressed, as Rich um, indicated in his summary. And I had uh, shown you a, briefly a slide on it. From those, we've extracted two that we feel we can get good assistance from the university community. right? And so I will simply highlight those. I'm assuming you have read the work scope. And uh, therefore, that's pretty detailed into, into what uh, is expected of you. From a clarification standpoint, it's not expected that you would propose to do both of these. You could do either one or both, depending on upon what your interest is. The first area is in severe accident computer systems. There are uncertainties now how degraded core debris can be cooled by steam or water flow, whether I'm thinking about a core degradation process or I'm thinking about a core uh, recovery or I'm trying to inject water. Those, um, those differences really come down to modeling insights. So we're looking for fundamental insights of analysis of past experiments, which are listed in our program pathway plan that can reveal ways to improve the modeling of fluid flow under such conditions. So this work could analyze past tests. It can propose improved models. It can show how improved models are validated relative to past tests and data. So that's one area. The second area is cooling of degraded core debris with water. In Fukushima, it was noted that, as many of you are aware, that uh, approximately 12, 13 hours into the accident, finally water was injected into Unit 1, and that was seawater. Uh, it was then a uh, concern had been raised that because we're using raw water and track seawater, that 
some other issues would come up relative how it would affect heat transfer, blockages, a number of things. So such effects really have not been fully considered, and so the purpose of this call or this topical area is to uh, look at ways to seek innovative ways to better understand the effects of water flow and heat transfer with raw, raw water, seawater, unfiltered water, not deionized, degassed, which is what normally is used in reactor cooling systems. And this, may, this work may in, uh, perfor, uh, involve performing experiments, or it may in, uh, involve performing more mechanistic analysis based on past work. With that, I'll, since I wanted to be brief, I'll open it up for questions. They can also contact Dr. Farmer or myself following the, the, uh, the webinar, and we can gladly answer individually or together. We have a few questions. Would this include decay heat modeling? Uh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm looking around here to make sure I'm not misrepresenting. I think decay heat is pretty well understood, so no. Is there interest on studies with intact fuel rods or just degraded debris? Degraded debris was the focus because that's where the uncertainties, when you look at severe accident, Beyond design basis modeling, that's where you see divergence of predictions. Are you interested in corium relocation modeling? Yes. For experiments with raw water, what operational conditions are of interest? Uh, I'm not sure what that means, so let me try again. Raw water means not what is normally used in reactor cooling, right? Deionized, so it could be anything from essentially uh, service water used on the plant site, condensate storage water, which is not directly necessarily injected, all the way to seawater. So anything other than normal operational water chemistry. Well, and, and what happens to that once it's injected? Because it'll be boiled ox, right? And, you know, contaminants can become concentrated, causing blockages, et cetera. Thank you. Will it be possible through this work scope to do on-site work at Fukushima? No. Are you interested in precipitation of salts? Yes. As a follow-up to that operational conditions question, they're asking about heat or pressure conditions. Well, um, heat addition and pressure could affect um, formation of blockages and also the ability to cool with either steam or water, so yes. 